Today we're going to be looking at Zoom, which is a web conferencing app and software that you can download on Mac, on Windows, on your phone, on an iPad, anywhere you can use Zoom. Uh, it's really popular right now and I think a lot of folks are using it for education and especially people who are meeting with teams or collaborating from home like I am. I've been doing a lot of video conference calls lately. Uh, so first off, you're going to want to sign up for an account and then download the software itself. So if you go to zoom.us or us, you can also click the link in the description. Uh, there's a big blue button in the upper right hand corner on the main page. Before we click that, if you are uh, using this for education, you might notice this green bar up the top says Zoom is removing the 40 minute time limit for basic free accounts for K through 12 schools affected by COVID. So if you're watching this in that time frame, they uh, have removed that limitation on free accounts. So you can click there to request that offer. So that big blue button in the upper right hand corner says sign up, it's free. So you can start by signing up with an email address and then going through and creating an account or you can sign in with Google, which is what we're gonna do. Once you've signed in, it's gonna ask you if you want to create accounts, quick one button click and it's gonna bring you to this dashboard. This dashboard here on the left hand side, you can see profile, all your meetings and adjust a bunch of settings. Here you can schedule a new meeting on your meetings tab. It'll show your upcoming meetings, your previous ones um, and meeting templates. Once you have meetings scheduled as a host, you can start them from here by clicking on the button or in the upper right hand corner of your screen, you're going to see schedule a meeting, join a meeting and host a meeting. If we click host a meeting, we can choose video on, video off or screen share only. I'm going to click video on. That's going to send us to another page to download Zoom. So go ahead and download this, whether you're Windows, Mac, anything, and install it. And if you already have it installed, it's going to ask you to open it up. So it's going to open up, and we're going to see it pop open with the live feed here. So you guys see my webcam on my computer now, um, as opposed to the camera I'm using to record this with. And so we're going to look at some of the basic features here. I'm going to hop out of this really quick. And if we were not in a meeting, the Zoom app itself has a dashboard of its own. And you could open up the app. You don't have to go to the web dashboard and log in. You could just open up the app here. And you notice we have a back to meeting button. If you're not currently in a meeting, that's going to say new meeting. So it's kind of like that host meeting button that we clicked. You can join meetings, schedule meetings, share your screen. So do like a meeting where you're only sharing a screen, not a video meeting. And you also see your upcoming meetings over here. We have a couple tabs at the top. We have chat. We can look at all of our meetings again, and we also have contact. This is kind of like a central hub that you can utilize to host meetings and join meetings. Now the basic settings of all your meetings are going to be in this gear icon in the upper right. Could be slightly different uh, location on your screen on a Windows computer. But all of these settings are here for you to adjust and there's a lot of different things. Visually, there's video, audio, screen share settings, chat settings, recording settings. You can look through these and tweak them to be how you want to run or host your meetings, how you want everything to work with your computer but I'm gonna go back to the meeting that we started. So in here to start with, you'll see full screen of your own webcam. Now at the bottom, we have our audio in the lower left. We can mute our audio or unmute it. And when you start this uh, host the meeting for the first time, it's gonna ask you if you wanna use your computer audio. I just go ahead and check, always use my computer audio because down here we can adjust the system settings here, whether it's with your microphone, with your speakers, and you can also go to audio settings, which is gonna pull up those same type of audio settings that we saw just, just a moment ago. We can test our speaker, test our mic, and select what sort of built-in or uh, you know USB microphone you're using. We can exit out of there. So those are all the audio settings in case your audio is not working. Video, same thing. We can stop the video. Our audio is still going to be recording, but the video won't show. It'll show your profile picture instead. Or you can start your video again, and then you can also adjust your video settings. So same thing. You can adjust which webcam you're using, whether it's your computer built in, or maybe you have a C920 webcam, which I would recommend, even though they're sold out right now. Um, I'll leave some links in the description to webcams and mics that I recommend. Uh, and you can adjust your video settings. So that's audio and video, but this is supposed to be a meeting. So what you need to do is really invite your participants. 
and that's the first button we see down in the toolbar is invite it's going to pull up contacts or email or what i like to use down here is copy invitation and if i click on that that's going to copy essentially a pre-written email that you can use to send out and it's got all the necessary information you would need to send out to your participants so it's got the link that they can click on the meeting id and the password for that meeting as well as call-in numbers. Now these call-in numbers are potentially not available on the free version, but they are available on the pro version if you upgrade. Uh, but for the most part, you would want people using sort of their computer, their phone to join the meeting, whether it's the app on their phone or uh, the app on computer, so they can use their computer audio, computer video, and really participate in the meeting itself. Now once you've invited everyone to your meeting, you're going to see them right above the screen there in different panels and we're going to walk through some of the settings and different ways that you can sort of manage your meeting here. So going along the bottom again, you see the next tab after invite is manage participants. And that's going to bump out a new dialog box which shows all of the participants in your meeting. Now I've went ahead and joined this two different times with uh, two other accounts. I've got a Windows PC to my right and I've actually got my phone here in front of me. I've got both of those muted. Now you as the meeting host can sort of manage what's going on with all of your participants. So here at the bottom of that screen you can see you can mute all or unmute all. And then underneath the more options there's mute participants on entry. So I would probably recommend doing that especially if you have a lot of people that are joining the meeting when they enter in they're going to be automatically muted allow participants to unmute themselves that one's kind of up to you uh, depending on the group that you have so you can be the one to unmute and mute them or you can let them sort of unmute themselves when they want to speak I uh, wouldn't recommend playing any any sound effects when anybody enters or exits you can allow participants to rename themselves and then lock the meeting now here's me the host I have an option to mute my mic or I can rename or edit my profile picture. Same thing with any of the other participants. As the host, I can mute or unmute and I can actually also chat with someone individually. I can stop their video. I can spotlight their video, which I'll show you what that is here in a second. You can actually make them a host, which means they'll have all full control of the meeting. So be careful with that one. Uh, allow them to record, rename, put on hold, or remove them from the meeting. The reason that I joined with three different participants is because this is how when someone speaks, they'll show up on the screen. So if I unmute the microphone on my other computer, I'm gonna go ahead and mute myself here as the host, and we'll find this other computer here. I unmuted the microphone over here, it's going to ask that participant if they want to unmute now. I'm gonna go ahead and say yes. And then as the meeting can hear them, it's gonna show them up here on the screen. You also have another view called gallery view. And that's gonna show everyone sort of individually the same size on the screen. And it's gonna put a green box around whoever's talking at the time. We're gonna mute everyone except for me. And you'll see the green box goes over my host uh, video. Go back to speaker view here. So essentially whoever's speaking, this is called like the active speaker view. Down at the bottom after manage participants we also have share screen. Now the share screen allows you to do all sorts of different desktop sharing. Uh, there's a whiteboard option where you can draw and have participants draw on the whiteboard. You can share individual windows, uh, your phone if you plug it in. There's also an advanced option where you can share portions of the screen uh, music or a computer sound only or content from a second camera. Now if you are sharing for instance your desktop uh, we're gonna go ahead and click on desktop one here. When I share that, that had my Zoom meeting open, it's gonna get that out of the way and only show what's on my desktop. We're gonna go ahead and minimize a couple things here and you can see that there's my desktop. Now if I scroll up to the top here of this green bar you can see that's telling me that I'm sharing my desktop currently. You can stop sharing. And you also have your toolbar up top here again, where you can pause, you can annotate, you can give remote control access to someone uh, so that they can actually control the screen. Now on the annotation, you can draw directly on the screen here. You can undo or redo, you can clear that. And you notice how it also says 
clear viewers drawings that means viewers can actually annotate on this as well so that might be one of the things in the more drop down that you maybe disable attendee annotation uh, just to help control what all of your attendees can do uh, to affect the presentation but here's where you can open up powerpoints you can open up browser windows or anything on your desktop to help teach or help move forward with your presentation to the right you'll notice that there is once again the thumbnail videos and we can show the active speaker video we can show everyone and it's going to once again put that green outline around whoever's speaking at the time if we show the active speaker and multiple people's mics are unmuted it's going to allow the thumbnail of the person who's speaking at the time to show and we can also hide that thumbnail video and simply show just who's talking in the thumbnail video view you can still have those same right click options to unmute or stop video of your participants as well as uh, pin them spotlight them or show them as the active speaker so we can stop sharing our screen it'll bring us back to the main desktop view app view of zoom and down here at the bottom we also have a chat tab so the chat's pretty interesting and you can allow everyone to chat you can allow only the host to chat people can chat privately or publicly you as the host can control that you can share files and then depending on who's in the meeting you can send a message to them privately or you can send it to everyone at once moving on to the next option you can record your meeting on this computer or in the cloud if you have the pro version but most more than likely you're going to want to record locally and then you can also do little reactions which kind of shows up on everyone's thumbnails whether it's a thumb up or like a clap and that'll disappear in about five seconds or so now in this screen share option there's another up arrow here and that's going to show whether or not multiple people can share their screen at once or if just one participant can share at a time if you go to the advanced sharing options you can actually control who can share so if you don't want any of your participants to share you can make this only host and that way only you as the meeting host can share your screen now if we look back at some of those settings options again if we click on one of these up arrows go to video settings we're going to pull up this general settings tab you'll notice there is a recording tab and that's where we can select where our recording saves so if you don't know where your recordings are going you can choose a file location for those to save now once you are done with your meeting you can go down here and click end meeting and you can either leave it or you can end the meeting for all if we do that it's just going to close out of the meeting completely and all of the participants are going to close out as well so that's a quick rundown of zoom as a web conferencing tool or a teaching tool if you're utilizing it that way i know a lot of you probably have some questions so just hit me up in the comments down below i'm going to be making a couple separate videos on how to schedule meetings how to join meetings as a participant and I may make some depending on what kind of questions I get and the different types of settings. I know there's a lot to look through here. I hope this quick sort of basic rundown helped you out. Definitely, if you have any questions, let me know. Once again, I'm Spencer from Pixel and Bracket, and I'll see you next time.